This is the story of the British Airways VC-10, tail number Golf Alpha Sierra Golf Kilo. The VC-10 is an interesting aircraft. Sure, it has four engines at the back, it looks a certain way, but to me the most interesting thing about the plane is its marketing. The official tagline for the airplane was, try a little VC tenderness, which I have to say, as far as taglines go, it's quite creative. On the 27th of November 1969, a VC-10 was taking off from London's Heathrow Airport bound for New York. The takeoff was normal in the cockpit, nothing unusual. But in the cabin, specifically the back, the passengers and the cabin crew heard a strange rubbing noise. Now you have to remember, the VC-10 had four engines, and all four engines were mounted at the back. The British needed a medium-range plane to fly to parts of their empire. BOAC had 707s but they were too big for the job. The British needed a plane that could also land and take off from less than ideal runways. So the solution was to put engines up on the tail so that debris wouldn't be an issue, and to have four of those engines so that it could fly medium haul routes. And that's how the VC-10 got its distinctive look. So back to our story. The plane took off and the crew carried out the noise abatement procedures. And after that, they pushed the engines back up to 94%. The plane continued to climb as the plane neared a navigational beacon in Woodley. The plane flew into a cloud bank and they turned on the de-icing systems as a precautionary measure at 5,000 feet. At 10.20 a.m., as the plane was climbing, the crew heard a loud bang and in the cockpit they got a warning that said that engine number 4, that is the rightmost engine, was on fire. Captain J.H. Smirthwhite immediately called for a checklist on engine number 4. Flight engineer R. Frobisher had data that made the captain's day much worse. Engine number three was booling down, and it could not be relit. They had lost all engines on the right side of the plane. As they were dealing with the failure of engine number three, they got a fire warning on engine number three. It appeared that the right side of their plane was on fire. A fire in the air is never a good sign, so they needed to land as soon as possible. A while later, the fire warnings were out, but the crew had their hands on the engine fire extinguishers in case the fire came back. A person on the ground saw that the plane was shedding bits and pieces. Unknown to the witness, they were watching the remains of the shattered engine. First Officer Schmee immediately got on the radio with London Control and requested an immediate return to Heathrow. The controllers asked the plane to turn to 060 degrees. They streaked back towards the safety of Heathrow, but there was a problem. The plane was fueled up for a very long flight, and so it was quite heavy. They needed to dump some fuel to land, but with a potential fire at the back of the plane, dumping fuel did not seem like a good idea. I mean, the last thing you wanted was a VC-10-sized flamethrower. So this meant that they'd be touching down, weighing 38,887 kilos, or about 85,000 pounds. To compensate for the extra weight, they'd have to land 25 knots faster than usual at 168 knots. That was not all. With two engines out of commission, the B hydraulic line had failed, and this meant that the right-hand landing gear wouldn't work, so they had to do a gravity drop, or open the doors and let the gears fall and lock into place under its own weight. The left-hand gear and the nose gear were powered by the A hydraulic line, so they worked perfectly. Due to the failure of the B line, they wouldn't have brakes on landing, so they had to use a hydraulic accumulator to use the right-hand brakes. The accumulator was charged and the plane touched down on the runway at Heathrow. They commanded full reverse thrust from engines 1 and 2 and braked hard. The brakes got so hot that they triggered fuses in the tires, deflating them. This is done so that the hot brakes don't cause the whole tire to explode. The plane came to a stop. They thought they'd need emergency slides, but they didn't. All of the 58 passengers and 11 crew members were safe, and they disembarked the plane via stairs. Once the plane was on the ground, the investigators could go over it with a fine-tooth comb. They were surprised by what they did not find on the plane, rather than what they did. Engine number 3 was missing a lot of components, including the turbine blades. It seemed that the source of the flight's problems were tied to the turbine blades. They had another bit of information to help them nail down what had happened the vibration that the crew had experienced on takeoff. The investigators were of the opinion that things started to go wrong as the plane was taking off. The engines have a lot of turbines to compress the air and such. During takeoff, they think that a low-pressure turbine failed. 
This failure threw the whole turbine out of balance, and that's what caused the vibrations that the occupants of the plane felt. The vibrations got so bad that the bolts and bearings, holding the turbine and shaft in place, failed, leading to more vibrations. Now, a bit of vibration is to be expected. In fact, the flying manual for the plane tells the pilots to expect a lot of vibration on takeoff. The manual goes on to let the pilots know that any action should only be taken after they were at the point in their flight where they had to pull back power. So the plane was climbing out and the engine was vibrating. The engine had two low pressure turbines. The vibrations were breaking the seals between them. This disrupted the airflow to the second low pressure turbine. The airflow had an important function in the engine of the VC-10. It cooled the turbine. With the airflow disrupted, the second turbine began to heat up. The damaged bearings now made things worse. The damaged bearings were leaking oil into the engine. With oil sloshing around the engine and with a turbine that was very hot, a fire was inevitable. The VC-10 now had a flaming engine. The fire burned hot, so hot that it began to deform and change the very properties of the material that the turbine was made of. When I say the fire changed the properties of the material of the turbine, I don't mean that in a good way. The fire weakened the turbine. It got to a point where the turbine couldn't take the stress that it was under any longer, and the turbine failed, showering the internals of the engine with the turbine. The failure of the turbine was so catastrophic that the turbine blades punctured the casing of the engine and damaged engine number 4. It also caused the reverser of engine number 3 to fall away due to the damage. With that, the VC-10 was robbed of two of its four engines. But something that confused the crew was the fact that the first fire warning that they had was for engine number 4, as the heat in engine number 3 had not triggered the fire warning at that point. Adding to that, all other indications on engine number 4 was normal, leading them to think that it might be an electrical system failure. But that notion was quickly disproven, as other parameters of engine number 4 showed that it was in distress. Over the course of the accident, the crew was a bit hesitant to shut down engine number 4, which is completely understandable. They had an overweight plane. Having an extra engine on landing would have made the approach a lot easier. Unfortunately, the report doesn't go into why the turbine failed. I'm guessing metal fatigue. But the bigger question is, how safe is this design? In this case, a failure of one engine took out another engine that was working perfectly. According to the British airworthiness rules of the time, it stipulated that if a single blade or a turbine failed, the damage would have to be contained within the engine. But in this case, the failure sent turbine blades flying in a number of directions. It was so energetic that the engine casing couldn't keep the damage to the engine. Another thing that was scrutinized was the captain's decision to not dump fuel, but the board found that the captain's actions were called for as the runway at Heathrow could accommodate a VC-10 with two of its engines out. After this incident, the safety board doubled down on the containment of engine failures. In this case, the damaged plane shed a lot of parts. This posed a threat to not only the plane, but to the people who were in the plane's flight path. Of course, you can design an engine that will never fall apart. So the board wanted a number of early warning devices, which would give advance indication for a failure of this type. So what do you think of the design of the VC-10? Not in an aesthetic sense, but in like a safety sense. Do you think it's a good idea to have all four engines bunched up at the back like that? Do let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe.